Hello and welcome to the course on manufacturing technology uh, theory and practice. I have uh, Mr. Aman Singh with me, who is the very highly competent technical officer in this uh, laboratory. And uh, Mr. Aman Singh will help me in operating the machine and he will show you all movements, surfaces that can be produced particularly in this case it is a lathe, after that we will go to other machines and uh, Aman will help in operating those machines. We are going to make this job, finish uh, job and as you can see that we have selected this because we have all the surfaces. We have the uh, cylindrical surface, we have the group sur grouped surface, we have the tapered surface, we have the threaded surface we have the cylindric, we have the center holes, all right. So, this is the job, this is the uh, initial job from where this workpiece will be uh, take, will, will be fabricated by removing the excess material from the surface, so that exactly this kind of a surface can be obtained. So, mind one thing that uh, in the drawing all these dimensions are given and the drawing should be perfect so that an operator can actually make the part with the help of this drawing. If there is any mistake in the drawing, then, then the operator will not be able to make the exact part that you desire according to your design. So, drawing is one of the most important things because it is the language of an engineer. So, you have to express yourself correctly so that such kind of a job can be fabricated. So, now uh, the, oh, the drawing that we have shown it to you, this part will be fabricated. For that, the workpiece is getting mounted in the three jaw chuck. Okay. And uh, as I have shown it to you, that three jaw chuck can be tightened with the help of uh, only one screw because this is a self centering chuck. And uh, when you are rotating that screw, all these three jaws will be rotated. Now, next step is that uh, the tool has to be mounted on the tool post. This is how the tool can be mounted. This is the Allen key and uh, Allen key will uh, tighten the uh, screws and bolts and those bolts will tighten or fix the tool in the tool post. This is the tool post and this is how the tool is tightened. All right. This is the tool holder and everything is sitting on the tool post. Uh, this is the way that you can actually remove or uh, give the height, uh, ma uh, you know maintain the height of the tool from the base, from this base. Now, the tool is uh, moved towards the workpiece and then the angle is fixed at which angle the tool has to be mounted in the tool post. This is how it is tool is tightened, tool uh, holder is tightened on the tool post. And then the machine is switched on. So, the tool is being touched with the workpiece and it is ready for the feed. <laughs> this is the way the tool is given the feed and now you can see that with a fine movement, feed movement, the tool is moving along the workpiece surface so that a cylindrical surface can be fabricated. Now, Amon is doing it by hand and you can see the small chips they are coming out of the um, surface of the workpiece. So, in fact, this feed can be also given automatically so that the the movement of the tool can be made. This is the way that the automatic feed is given. 
So of course, before switching on, uh, you have to select the appropriate uh, RPM by those handles that I have shown it to you earlier. Here, you can see that this is automatic now. The feed, the, the tool is moving along the workpiece surface automatically and the value has been set prior to that and the automatic feeding is given. So first the entire length is being turned. So you have faced it. Okay. So first the facing has been done. And uh, this is the, the your, um, for the center drill. This is the drill holder and that drill holder will be making the uh, center holes for uh, keeping those that part between the centers or drilling the hole. So now the center hole will be drilled and you can see the, cent the center uh, drill is mounted on the drill chuck or the drill holder and uh, now this will be the, the work piece is rotated. This is the way that center drill is center hole is made. Such center holes are also made to hold the uh, long parts between the centers. So this is loosening the tailstock and the tailstock is no more required here. So therefore the tailstock has been removed to the uh, initial position. Okay. Now it is turned around and the another side at on the another side the facing will be done. Facing has to be done because we have to make sure that the face is absolutely perpendicular to the axis of the workpiece. Again uh, similar to the other side the facing is done. In that case the feed is given as you can see the direction of the feed is perpendicular to the workpiece surface okay. because along the workpiece surface if you are applying feed then you will have the cylindrical surface. That's it, the facing has been made. <coughs> so this is measured the length accurately and uh, the length that has to be according to the drawing. And, 107. Eh? 107. So, according to the drawing, it has to be 107? 105. 105 millimeter. And right now it is 107 millimeter. So, 2 millimeter has to be removed from this end. <coughs> so, we are setting the movement of the tool. All right. This is the micro setting and this is a 2 millimeter, right? Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the 2 millimeter along the length of the uh, shaft is being removed. So now it is 105 millimeter according to the drawing. So it is removed in a uh, few steps. These are the passes. Each pass is removing uh, certain length. All right. So that finally the 2 millimeter of the length is removed. So now the shaft length will be exactly 105 millimeter which is according to the drawing.
okay, 105 millimeter. Yes, so you can read it from the main scale and the vernier scale and you have to maintain that according to the drawing. Next step is the chamfering, isn't it? No, next day, oh, sorry, next, next step is the center drill, yes. So, the center hole has to be made. So, it is like on the other side, the uh, center drill is being made here. So, the drill is being moved forward with manually. the center drill center hole is made on both sides and the center drill is removed from the tail stock uh -huh. now we will make the uh, center and we'll hold the tool from center to center because we have to turn the entire length of the workpiece so therefore the uh, to turn the entire length of the workpiece, the workpiece has to be held between these two centers. So, one center which is dead center, it is attached to the spindle through in the three jaw chuck and this is the dog carrier. I have shown it to you dog carrier earlier and now you can see that how the transmission can be given, rotation can be given to the cylindrical job with the help of that dog carrier. So, the other end is with the revolving uh, center and this is connected to the other end of the shaft. Okay, so, now that dog carrier is tightened and uh, the job can be, I mean the workpiece can be turned along the centers. Now, the uh, cutting fluid is getting switched on. As you know that during that lot of heat will be generated and the uh, friction will be more to reduce the friction and to reduce the heat the uh, cutting fluid is switched on. And here you can see that the uh, feed is given it is being adjusted. and it will be automatically going along the axis of the workpiece. The workpiece which is selected is of mild steel which is uh, ductile material therefore, you can see the continuous chips are being formed. <coughs> A lot of heat is produced because of the uh, plastic deformation and the friction and that heat is removed to a large extent by the um, cutting fluid which is supplied in the cutting zone between the cutting tool and the workpiece. So along the length the it is turned and uh, now the length will be measured and the diameter will be measured. Mm -hmm. okay. 20 point? 21.3. 21.3. So the diameter is 21.3 millimeter that has been measured and here the diameter given is 20. As you can see the diameter that we have to take is 20 millimeter. So, right now it is 21.5. So, 1.5 millimeter has to be removed from both sides, 1.5 by 2. Now, that much is value is set here, and then again the turning is performed <coughs> so that the diameter is reduced to the accordingly to the uh, required size.
Well, the entire diameter of uh, 20 millimeter. 20.7. So now it is 20.7. It has come. Now the uh, this 20.7 or 20 millimeter which is required, he is making it along the entire length of the shaft. But uh, what we will be getting the, is the 20. Uh, you can see that 20 millimeter diameter we will be getting only along the length of 15 millimeter. All right. So for the rest of the length, we will have these elements. So that we will be showing you gradually. Well, now let us see what is the diameter that has been obtained. This diameter is being measured by the micrometer and with the help of the main scale and the vernier scale, it is exactly, it has come out to be exactly 20 millimeter. So, what we obtained is this diameter, all right. this diameter is 20 millimeter. So, then we have to have the groove along the length after the 15 millimeter from the, this end and so on. So, these elements will be uh, fabricated gradually. After that, we are turning the, the workpiece and on the other side, these elements have to be made. That means, on the other side, the facing has been made, then there will be chamfering and then there will be the turning up to the diameter of 14 millimeter and the thread has to be cut. So, these elements have to be made by turning the workpiece. <laughs> so, as you can see now the entire length of the shaft is turned and uh, the portion which was uh, covered by the uh, dog carrier, this por that portion is now removed after it has been turned on the other side. So, now the entire length is turned. Step turning. Now, you will be, you'll be doing that step turning. Okay. Now, you can see the step turning process is uh, uh, on and uh, if you remember in the uh, drawing we have the steps first you have to get the 14 millimeter diameter on which the thread has to be made right hand thread So right now what he is doing is that he is making the diameter of 14 millimeter along the length of 20 millimeter. Yeah. That will be 14? 14.35. 14.35. So, it has to go up to 14 millimeter. 0.35 millimeter has to be still removed.
How much? It is within the tolerance level, and therefore, what we are getting is that diameter 14 millimeter, 14.01, let's say. Now, in this diameter, 14.01, according to the drawing, within the length of 20 millimeter, we have to cut the thread. So, now along the length of the job, uh, he will mark the places where the grooves have to be made. So, the first groove and thread length will be 29 millimeter, for taper length 51 millimeter, and grooving 64 millimeter according to the drawing. So, the dimensions are taken adjusted and then the machine is on. So, these are the markings that he is making. This is for the radius groove, that is a groove. So, this is the tool that you can see, this is the tool for making the groove All right. and uh, this tool actually has uh, another purpose as well, serving another purpose also because that is the threading. threading. Okay. So, one tool has threading tool in one side and the grooving tool on the another side and this tool will be used for making the groove. So, that is being mounted on the tool holder and the tool holder is fixed on the tool post. Now, the tool is tightened on the tool holder. So, the dimension is taken by adjusting the dial of the machine. So, in few passes, the diameter has been reduced for the grooving. This is the grooving. This is? 16.2. 16.2 and if you see the drawing this is the one that has been that has to be maintained which is 16 millimeter okay. so 0.2 millimeter has to be removed along the diameter So, this is now 16 millimeter. Hmm? Okay, 16 millimeter. Fine. Then complete. Mm -hmm. Now, 15 length. 15 mm length. -hmm. Mm -hmm. 51. So, this is the total dial. Total length 51, okay. so, length so, if you point. see, if you see the drawing, this length is 20 plus 10 plus 20, which is 50 millimeter, and this length is after that diameter of 16 millimeter. So, he is turning now this length to maintain this uh, 50 millimeter. This is 0.6, okay. 50.6. 
Another 0.6 millimeter has to be reduced. Yeah, so now it is 50 millimeter, that is the length. Now, if you see the drawing, according to this drawing, we have to now make this uh, 12 millimeter diameter of grooving and the 10 millimeter length of that groove. All right. After that, we have to get this right hand thread on the length of 20 millimeter from here. So that has been done in few passes. Now it is 12 millimeter diameter of the groove. And this distance of 20 millimeter has to be maintained. You can also see how the vernier can be used to measure the length and that is probably more accurate than using the scale. Yeah, the distance is maintained. Now, that is the distance which has to be 20 millimeter on which the taper turning has to be made. Okay, so that distance, that diameter is made as, uh, uh, the, the length is made as 20 millimeter after the groove and on that 20 millimeter length, the taper turning has to be done. Okay, so now the taper turning has to be done for that. Uh, what Mr. Aman is doing is he is changing the angle of the tool so that accordingly this taper can be turned as given in the drawing and that as per the drawing the angle is selected by uh, moving or by changing the angle of the tool. Now it is tightened the tool holder and the tool post. And the tool that is used is for the taper turning tool, taper turning. Okay, now if you see that the feed will be not parallel to the workpiece surface, but at an angle with the workpiece surface. And you will see that the taper is generated.
feed is given manually and since the feed is not parallel to the workpiece axis it is inclined to that so therefore there will be a taper surface generated along the length of 20 millimeter and that is being done in few passes Now the taper is turned along the length of 20 millimeter according to the drawing. The tool post is again taken back to the initial position. Well, what we have uh, so far done is the turning of the cylindrical surface, afterwards is the grooving and then the taper turning that you have seen and then the grooving. So, Mr. Aman Singh will now make the radius grooving so that within that you can get some exit point for the tool for making the knurling. For knurling, we will see that the tool has to be changed to a knurling tool that I have shown it to you earlier and that knurling tool will be used for making the knurling surface within that distance that he has already marked. So, before the knurling, he will make the radius grooving and then followed by the knurling. Okay, Mr. Singh. So, now the tool is being changed from turning tool, grooving tool radius. to the radius tool because he will be making the radius grooving. Radius grooving is nothing but a groove with a certain radius with a semicircular shape and uh, that is according to the drawing. So, in the drawing you must have noticed that there is a radius grooving. He has already marked that part where the radius grooving has to be made and the remaining part which is from the groove to the uh, radius grooving, the knurling will be there. So, for the radius grooving, the radius grooving tool has been used which is given the feed perpendicular to the workpiece surface, to the cross feed. So, in that case, the radius grooving shape will be as per the shape of the tool. Here you can see that the cross feed is given and the tool shape is being conform to the surface. So, you can see that the radius grooving has been made with a cross feed given to the tool and cross feed is once again towards the uh, center of the workpiece. So, it is it is perpendicular to the workpiece axis. Now, the tool is changed, tool is changed to the knurling tool. <clears throat> this is what the knurling tool is which you have already seen and the knurling tool will be used to make the knurling sur knurled surface within that length which is remaining between the two groups, between the radius grooving group and the um, other group on the left side that you can see. Well, this is the uh, knurling tool and a particular knurling tool will be selected, it has been selected. All right. So, this is the knurling tool that has been selected and that knurling tool will be impression will be taken if you are if uh, you are giving the cross feed to the knurling tool. Of course, in that case the rotation will be slower. So, initially the cross feed will be given 
for getting the depth of cut and then after that a very at a very slow speed the uh, longitudinal feed will be given to the tool so that the knurled surface can be obtained as you can see now the longitudinal feed is given So the cutting fluid is applied so that the friction between the tool and the workpiece is less and the temperature occurring will be less or, or rather it will be carried away from the machining zone. This is a hand feed is given. As you can see that the knurling tool is loosely fitted in the tool holder and therefore as the knurling tool is in touch with the workpiece, it also rotates along with the workpiece. So it is reciprocated with, uh, with a particular feed so that the appropriate depth of the knurled surface can be obtained. So the knurled surface is obtained, you can zoom it and uh, we can see that this surface that is obtained is a knurled surface. So this, uh, as I said that normally those kind of surfaces are used for gripping or for uh, retaining so that the uh, lubricant can be retained when the two surfaces are meeting. Well, now that the knurled surface is made, so as per the drawing, now the thread will be cut in this surface, in this, along this length, that length is probably 20 millimeter. And for that, we have to make some adjustments and those adjustments I have shown it to you, those are the handles provided here. So according to those adjustments, you will find out and fine tune the pitch of the uh, thread that has to be that will be cut here. So now the for cutting the thread the tool has to be changed. So uh, this is the tool for the thread cutting and that tool is different from the one that we have used for the turning of the surface. All right, all right. How it is different is that this tool has the same profile as the profile of the thread. This is 60 degree. So this is the 60 degree angle that means the profile of the thread will be at 60 degree angle. So this is being measured. So this is 60 degree. If you, if you remember that this gauge measures the profile of the thread. All right. So since the thread will be cut by this tool, so this tool also will have the same angle. So as you can see that this fits in here. So therefore, it will be 60 degree. We can make sure. So the, now the thread profile, thread that will be cut using this tool will have a profile of 60 degree, at 60 degree angle. Well, there is another factor that in the case of the thread cutting, first of all, the speed will be slower cutting speed will be slower and the adjustment will be made in such a way that after the first pass, the second pass will exactly follow the same path, okay, so that the depth of the thread will be more, but it will be moving or the feed will be given to the tool along the same path. That is the adjustment that has been made. You can notice that. So certain uh, depth of cut has been taken in the first pass and then the feed will be given to the tool with the adjustments that has been made. Now the thread is being cut, then again the depth of cut is changed 
and the tool is moving along the same path. Depth of cut is taken a little more. Now, with the increasing depth of cut, the depth of depth of the thread is becoming more and more in each pass. And as you can see that for each pass, the tool is tracing the same path as the previous one. In each pass, the feed is increased with respect to the previous one. And finally, the thread is cut as you can see. So there is a certain depth in the uh, thread. So that depth is achieved gradually in uh, few passes because in one pass it is not possible because it will be uh, the force will be very high and the temperature occurring will be very high and the tool may actually break even. All right, if you see now the thread is thread is made and the thread profile will be exactly 60 degree according to the tool and now the bars are being removed by the file so that the uh, thread is smooth. These are the bars which are remaining uh, after the machining, after the turning and those bars have to be removed otherwise these bars will disturb the thread from going into the threaded hole that completes it right. So now you can see now you can see that and give me the drawing ok. So if you compare it with the drawing here we have the threaded portion we have the thread within the uh, distance of 20 millimeter and the thread diameter is 14 millimeter. So, this is the metric thread therefore, it is given as M 14. So, the tool makes it uh, metric that is a metric tool and the adjustment that is made is uh, according to the uh, specifications given for making that thread. After the thread you can see that there is um, uh, certain distance of 10 millimeter there is a groove that di the diameter is 12 millimeter. So, this is this surface and after that there is a tapered surface, tapered surface is here within the 20 millimeter of uh, length and the tapered dimensions are given. All right. So, after that there is uh, this portion which is 16 millimeter uh, diameter and within 15 millimeter of length which is here. Then the knurled surface here, knurled surface dimensions are given here it is written that this has to be null then there is a radius given for the groove that has been made here 
and after that it is turned okay within the distance of 15 millimeter and the diameter is 20 millimeter so this is the entire uh, turning turned uh, finished product which has been made as you have seen from the workpiece which was initially used and uh, according to the dimensions which are mentioned in the drawing this finished part is being fabricated well there are few words about uh, settling the um, about the uh, setup for the thread cutting now uh, let's say the pitch for the thread is given as 2 mm well uh, pitch means the distance between the two peaks of the pitch of the thread so if it is 2 mm according to this table which is given on the machine this 2 means you go to this that is t and the capital t stands for this kind of arrangement of the uh, gears and these arrangements are if you can see 54 number of teeth 50 number of teeth and so on so according to this you have to make the gear train with the help of the um, the gear the, the gear in the in the gearbox and then what you will get is exactly 2 millimeter pitch for the thread cutting so this is the adjustment that has to be made before you cut the thread and if it is suppose 2.25 or 2.5 so accordingly you will be making the um, arrangement for the gear train that's the adjustment now we will demonstrate uh, the milling operations so before we uh, go for the uh, for operating the milling machine i would like to tell you that we have uh, the milling machines which are uh, vertical milling machine as well as horizontal milling machine so the difference between them is as you know that if the uh, axis of the milling cutter is horizontal in that case the machine will be called as a horizontal milling machine and if the axis is vertical in that case the milling machine is the vertical milling machine so in both of these milling uh, machines the different kind of milling cutters are used which will be showing it to you here and as you understand that uh, uh, cutters like end mill for example face milling for example all those can be made in the in the vertical milling machine and uh, in the case of the horizontal milling machine we have the uh, basically the flat surface the the, the slotting okay the various kind of grooves those are made in milling, making the milling machine overall so here if you see that there are different kind of uh, components and the tools that are being used let's say here we are demonstrating the spar gear all right so this is the spar gear with the straight uh, teeth all right this is demonstrated here is the bevel gear as you can see that the here it is the uh, conical in shape and uh, therefore the difference between the bevel gear and the spar gear is that when the spar gear arrangement is made for transmitting the power then the two shafts between which the power is transmitted they are parallel okay now in case of bevel gear as you understand that if another bevel gear is in contact with this and the power is transmitted then the axis of the shafts of these two shafts will be perpendicular to each other whereas in case of spar gear it was parallel to each other now here you can see that there is a helical gear all right helical gear uh, if you remember your machining course there was uh, a concept of uh, orthogonal cutting and the oblique cutting in case of oblique cutting the tool is inclined all right tool is inclined with respect to the cutting velocity vector so in that case in the case of oblique cutting therefore the when the tool is getting engaged with the workpiece it getting it gets engaged gradually and therefore the more strength of the tool can be uh, utilized same principle is achieve, is is uh, achieved same uh, principle is adopted and same benefit is achieved by the helical gear if the two helical gears are working then the uh, their um, you know uh, the 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 torque carrying capacity therefore increases so you can see that these are not the straight uh, teeth but they are helical all right now here if you see that this is a cutter adapter all right it has a standard this is an international standard 
and uh, particularly we have now our Indian standards. So according to the Indian standards also the uh, adapters and other tools are being made. So this is an adapter meaning that with the help of this uh, nut, so you can, uh, sorry, in the help of the screw, you can fix a milling cutter in here. For example, you have already, you can see already here, there is a milling cutter which is fixed here, all right. So similarly, a milling cutter can be fixed here. This is the adapter and this is the adapter with the milling cutter. I will come to this milling cutter a little later. Now here, uh, this is the uh, piece, this is the uh, element which is called the arbor. Arbor is something on which the milling cutter is mounted and this is used for the horizontal milling machine. These two ends will be held on the, um, on the uh, spindle and the milling cutter will be mounted somewhere here with the spacers. Okay. And uh, the whole attachment is called the arbor. So on the arbor, the milling cutter is attached in the horizontal milling machine. We will go there and we will see that. In here, uh, this you are already familiar with. This is the lathe dog. All right. This is the collet. All right. So this is the collet adapter for attaching the collet here. You can see that the collet is here. So you can uh, attach different kind of collets. These are the collets. These are the this is the design of the this is the uh, coal, actual collet. And uh, this is a C spanner for uh, tightening or loosening. This is called the step clamp set, meaning that here you can by giving by attaching with the different teeth, you can see that there are teeth. So you can change the height, all right. The height can be changed by uh, uh, engaging different teeth uh, with, with respect to each other. Now uh, we have different kind of cutters that you can see here. For example, this is the side and face cutter. This is a milling cutter and this is called the side and face cutter because the sides and the faces can be uh, milled here. As you can see here, this is the keyhole. All right. And uh, in the keyhole, there through the key, it will be fixed on the uh, shaft or the arbor of the milling, cut, milling machine. All right. Similarly, here we have the staggered cutter. Staggered cutter is different as you can see that different from the side and the face cutter. All right. And uh, here we have the helical milling cutter. So helical milling cutter, as you can see that there is a helical gear that we have shown here. And this is the helical milling cutter. So this helical milling cutter is equivalent to the oblique tool in the uh, turning process. All right. Because as you can see that these are inclined. So these helical milling cutters, when they will be engaged to the workpiece for removing material, it will and it will get engaged to the uh, uh, with the workpiece gradually and not it will not grab the workpiece at a time so therefore the uh, life of the tool will be more because it is grabbing the work uh, the, the work material gradually here this is the slitting saw cutter for making a slit making a slit like this for example on a uh, shaft let's say so for that, you, uh, we, you know, if you are using a key, in that case on the shaft on which this will be mounted, there has to be a keyhole also. So that keyhole on the shaft can be made with the cutter like this. So this is the slitting saw cutter. Saw cutter. So this, is, this will make the slits. Also everywhere you can see that there is a keyhole here. So that keyhole is to uh, fit the milling cutter on the arbor with the help of the key and these are the keyholes. So one keyhole is here, another keyhole will be on the shaft and between these keyholes there will be key. So this will be slide on the uh, key and the um, keyhole of the shaft. This is the sprocket cutter. So you know the chain and sprocket mechanism. So that sprocket can be uh, machined or cut with the help of the sprocket cutter. So this is the sprocket cutter as you can see. This is the angle mill cutter. So this milling cutter as you can see that this has a certain profile and with this the, the uh, profile that you will be making will be according to the uh, 
according to the uh, teeth of the milling cutter. So this will be conformed to the workpiece. All right. This is the inserted face milling cutter. And uh, if you can see that here the milling cutter has the inserts, like I have shown it to you, the tools. These inserts are made of very expensive materials. So therefore, instead of making the entire uh, cutter with the same material, otherwise it will be very expensive, the material of this holder is of different kind than the uh, inserts. And inserts are very expensive. So therefore, if the insert is worn out or it is broken, individually the inserts can be changed. All right. And otherwise, what would have happened, for example, in these cases, either you resharpen or sorry, you, you regrind the, the, the teeth or you throw out the entire uh, milling cutter if it is worn out. But in this case, you can change the inserts, use another fresh insert, and the whole thing can be used as a new one. So that is the advantage of those inserts because the inserts are very expensive. You cannot make the entire uh, milling cutter with the same material as the insert material. Here you can, if you can see, this is called the shell end milling cutter. All right. This milling cutter is different from those milling cutters that we have shown. And this is also the material is the same for the entire milling cutter. Well, normally these, these uh, milling cutters are made of high speed steel, uh, all right, with different grades of high speed steel. There are Molly HSS, there are Super HSS. So that we will discuss some of them uh, in the lecture uh, classes. This is inserted face milling cutter again. So this is used for the face milling. Again, there are inserts. By the way, the face milling is used when you need a good surface of the base as well as the uh, vertical surface that is made. Uh, that is made. So uh, both the vertical surface as well as the horizontal surface are uh, milled using the face milling cutter. Now here we have the uh, ratchet cutter. If you remember the uh, ratchet mechanism, okay. So the ratchet is cut using this uh, milling cutter, and you can see that this milling cutter is different from the other milling cutters. Uh, that you have shown, you have seen. This is the rack cutter again. So this cut, this kind of a cutter is used to make the rack for the rack and pinion. All right. This is the special milling cutter, which is called the woodruff cutter. All right. For some reason, this name is given as a woodruff cutter, but this is vertically mounted and it rotates along. I mean, about this vertical axis. This is the module cutter. This is for the uh, certain module which is defined that is used for that. Then this is the key way cutter. The key way that you are making uh, on the shaft or on the, uh, on the um, uh, you know, um, uh, circular part, this key way is made with using the cutters like this. This is also another face milling cutter. These are also inserts. And these inserts can be changed without throwing out the entire tool. This is the holder. On the holder, you have the inserts. So these inserts are, uh, are mounted on this so that the, these inserts can be used as a tool. And if, it is, if they're worn out, these inserts can be replaced by the fresh inserts. Thank you for your attention.